Hello everyone, this is Michael and today we're going to have a look at the new Kinesis Advantage 360 keyboard. So we're going to start with the regular old Advantage 2. Uh, this particular one here is an Advantage 2 LF. Um, but So the, the LF is for the key switches that it comes with. It comes with the red cherry key switches. But this particular one, um, if you want to take a quick listen, you can probably tell those are not the red key switches. These are cherry blues that I've soldered in. Um, there's also my custom keyboard controller in this keyboard. Uh, so it's quite different than the, the stock keyboard. But uh, just for context, so I've been using an Advantage 2 keyboard for well over the last 10 years. Um, not necessarily this particular one. Um, when I started out, they were a little bit different. Um, I think the, the biggest example of what has been improved uh, over the years in the, within the Advantage 2 series is the first row here, like the row with all of the function keys. And in the older models that I started out with, these were all like rubber domey, super wobbly kind of keys. Um, but now, like, uh, if you if you press them down, they're like Cherry ML switches. So they're actually proper switches. Like the keys themselves, they don't necessarily feel as good as like a full sized key, but at least it feels kind of good. Um, so it's actually like with the older Kinesis series, I would never use the function keys. And with this one, it's kind of okay to use the function keys, like, you know, pressing F12 to bring up the developer tools in your browser, um, or pressing F1 to like bring up the help, um, or, you know, when you're debugging and you want to like step into functions and use like F10, F11, uh, F F11, F12, that sort of thing. Uh, that actually works reasonably well uh, with the with this one here. So, um, Kinesis announced that they have a new keyboard um, and they opened it up for pre-orders and I pre-ordered one just to see what it would be like. Uh, and a couple of days ago it actually arrived. So uh, let's just put this one here to the side. And instead we're gonna look at the 360, which as you can tell is a split keyboard. Um, so in comparison to the old Kinesis, they do deliver you a bracket with which you can get exactly the right spacing to make it exactly as large as the older one. But I think, you know, it being split is half the fun. So um, if you just use the bracket, why bother, right? So I think, um, you know, it being properly split is one of the things that I liked about this model, right? Because you know, if if you if you look at sort of where your arms and hands are, right? Like if I just rest them comfortably on my chair, you can see that like okay, the right hand it can comfortably fit the trackball. But what about the left hand, right? Like it's it's to the side of the keyboard. So ideally, I think I move this over here, so I don't need to move the hand at all. I move this one as far out as possible here. Um, so I could maybe, you know, maybe the trackball needs to go a little bit further to the right even so I could comfortably rest my hands here. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's actually um, look at what they ship. I'm not going to do a full like unboxing video because I'm sure there's others who are going to do it. Um, this is more of a first impressions kind of thing. All right, so in the setup that I would typically use it in, uh, I mean, first of all, you need to like connect the two halves, obviously. Um, they do deliver you like this nice little cable. I'm not sure if it'll show up on camera, but there's like a nice little 360 uh, engraved here on the cable, which I think gives it a very nice touch. Also, this cable, like it feels very, very valuable. Um, it's like, a, it's a good cable. This cable here, this is like the main cable, right? You can see, first of all, it again has like the little 360 on the plug, which I think is, is cute and elegant. It has Kinesis uh, here on the other plug, which, hey, that's really cool. Um, and then it has another Advantage 360 um, labeling here 
on this sort of um, on this thing here. So the thing about this cable is it, it is long, right? So on the one hand, that is good um, if you want to connect your keyboard and your computer is like under your desk and you have a far away to go. On the other hand, I I'm really not a friend of having these cables which are sort of you know, stiff and formed like that. Like, I just wish it was a little more flexible. Um, so you could more comfortably like roll it up or something. But I suppose what I'll need to do with this one is just, you know, it, it plugs in here. You can't plug it over here. Like if you plug it into the left hand side, the left hand is reserved for like the foot pedal, which, you know, if you haven't heard it, this might surprise you, but Kinesis does make foot pedals. All right, so let's plug it in here. I'm probably just gonna like, you know, wrap this up nice and tight. All right, but you can kind of see that now we have this sort of bulky cable lying around. Well, I suppose that's why I got for taking the cabled one instead of the wireless one, but here we are. All right, so, cool. Okay, so um, like on the monitor, I what I have open here is um, I have like a, a kernel message output so that we can see that the new Kinesis uh, showed up on the USB bus. And um, we're gonna have a look at how it behaves when we like enter the V drive and stuff like that. So that's gonna be important later on. Um, but first of all, you can probably hear the difference. Let me type a little bit. All right, so I hope it comes across reasonably well on the video, but what happens here is you can hear me typing on um, what are Cherry MX Brown key switches, which is what the Kinesis has historically been shipping with, um, and what this one is shipping with as well. They say that you can work with like a third party vendor to customize your Kinesis, and presumably they just ship the PCB and material to the vendor um, or, you know, the vendor orders half of it, I suppose. And then the vendor just solders you, you know, uh, an updated part of the Kinesis, which is exactly the same procedure that I would do myself. But um, the reason why I have this already is because I didn't do any customizations whatsoever. Otherwise, I would have had to wait way longer. So what you can see here is just a stock behavior. And um, I'm not going to go and jump ahead to the conclusions yet, but one thing that I can say is that just the difference between the browns and the blues means that while I have had this for a couple of days, after the initial sort of trying it out, I quite quickly put it to the side and switched back to the one keyword that I use with the with the MX Blues, just because I like the key switch so much better. Uh, it's, a, it's a really big deal for me, apparently. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at, at what's happening here. Um, so you can see, first of all, like the, the new design, um, the, the split design, I think it's kind of neat um, in that you get a little bit of space in between here. If you take a look at the older one, you can actually see that in the middle here, I actually installed these little rubber feet. And this is a position in which I like to rest my smartphone in which like I quite like and this is not possible anymore with the new design right so either like I can't rest it here I would need to move these apart for um, to, to make enough space that I could rest it on the desk which you know that's probably fine like probably a lot more people are able to just move this a little bit further and then use the space in the middle of their desk. You can also kind of see that this is about as far as the cable that they included will go. So if you need to move it further out, uh, you'll need to use a custom USB-C cable, which they also say that you can do and any cable should work. Um, I suppose one should qualify that with any cable that supports a data connection will work because sometimes there's cables that are charging only and I mean, obviously those won't work. All right. so. You know, I can I can rest my phone here, um, no big deal. Um, then it also means that all of the LEDs, which were sort of 
over here in the middle have now moved out to the sides. And the even larger change uh, in, in terms of visual and, and key layout actually is that what used to be a separate row, and I'm gonna pull the other keyboard up here just to, just to illustrate. Um, what used to be a separate row here of escape and the function keys is no longer a physical row of keys on the keyboard. Instead, you can see that the function keys have sort of moved here, which I suppose is fine because that means that now you can actually press the function keys and you get sort of the the proper key feel, right? Like it's, it's a proper key, it's not a different key anymore. So it's good in terms of uniformity. But if you look at the legend, you can see that, for example, F5 is on number four. And like, it's sort of weirdly shifted one, right? And the reason they need to do it, obviously, is that they don't have enough keys to make it sort of match the numbers. So F12 is here on the very far out key. Um, there just isn't enough space in the layout to like properly have them align up. But I still think it's sort of, I, I foresee that I'm gonna hit the wrong key. <laughs> um, and the other thing is that, you know, with the with the top row being merged into like the key wells, it's not a big deal for some of the keys, right? For example, there used to be like a program key and, and a keypad key. And these are now here, like the KP is like the keypad layer key. And if we press it down, you can see that the LED over here um, it changes, right? Um, so that indicates in which layer you are, which is very good because otherwise it can be very confusing. And the other layer that we have is the function layer, which you can already see like a difference here is the keypad layer is sticky and the function layer is not sticky. You need to hold it down or you need to press two function keys at the same time to make it sticky. There's also like a second and even a, I believe a third function layer, which I haven't quite figured out yet how to use them. Okay, so the, 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 like the keypad key, no big deal. The reprogram keys, no big deal. There's like this new cool um, shortcut key over here. Like these, these three are actually extra, right? Like they did not exist um, in the old keyboard, right? In the old keyboard, you had YHN, YHN, but then these three keys, they just physically did not exist on the old one. Similarly for the function keys, like on the very top, on the very bottom left and on the very bottom right, these function keys did not exist in the old. Okay, so, okay, keypad program, no big deal, but then the big deal is escape. Where is the escape key, right? And what they do is by default, they put escape here, right? Where, where caps lock used to be and caps lock goes here. And you can see that I already switched these out. I switched these out against blank keycaps. So this one here, like these two keys, escape and caps lock, I reverted them to be caps lock and escape. And that's not because I'm a fan of caps lock or anything. And I think the decision by Kinesis to switch them out is actually a great decision for the vast majority of people. But I actually need this one to be caps lock because in the software level on my computer, the keyboard layout that I'm using makes heavy use of the caps lock key. Like the layout itself remaps it to be a modifier key. So for me, this needs to remain the modifier key. There's just no way around it. I can't press this one. I need to have this one all the time because like when I'm typing in my editor and I wanna say, for example, um, you can find the config file in, and then I would use slash and the way I, I generate a slash in my layout is modifier and S right in slash ETC. Um, so for me, it's vital that this remains caps lock. So the improvement that Kinesis did in terms of changing the default layout, it doesn't help me, but it also doesn't hurt me. And it was very easy to like swap these two keys around just using the remap functionality. You don't even need to go into all of the heavy customization for that. Just swapping out a key, like remapping a key is very simple and you can do it on the keyboard itself. Um, and, and also they like deliver you these keycaps. There's also like one that does have caps lock on the label and I could have put that there, but I felt like the blank ones were cooler just to indicate that there's something going on here in my layout that is non-standard. 
All right, so, but then that leaves us with, well, now, okay, but where's the escape key, right? Um, because now it's kind of here, um, but I usually, I, I map it onto the delete key because that's on the thumb cluster and I like to have it conveniently here, right there. It's a leftover from when I was using Vim all the time, but still, it's just what I'm used to. Okay, so then escape goes on here, so that means that this one must then be the delete key. Okay, fair enough. But now the problem is, well, on the old Kinesis, this one here was actually a different key. This was the international key, which, as you can see here, as a secondary function had insert. So in order to paste something, I could press shift and insert. And because that key is now missing here, it's not the international key, this is now the delete key. So this is, a, for me, this is actually a significant change in the keyboard layout, right? Like they they removed one key that I was using. Um, so I need to, to yeah, adapt to the new layout. What I have resorted to is using this key here, which is like the um, backslash and, and, and pipe symbol, because I figured out that I actually never used this. Uh, for its proper function. As I mentioned, I use a different keyboard layout, right? And like a backslash and a pipe symbol, for me, those are the keys that, that come out of like the, the left-hand side modifier that I was talking about. I never need to reach up here. So I figured, you know, it looks kind of similar to the international key. I remapped it to be that international key. So for me, you now, you know, shift insert, um, it does work by just shift and then that, that other key here. Okay. Minor key mapping aside, um, let's talk some more about the, the different key caps and sizes and forms here. So, you know, obviously I already mentioned, I swapped out these two. Another modification that I did is um, swapping out this one here and then the, the alt keys here. Like by default, this one here, when they ship it, it's the Windows key. And I just don't like to be reminded of Windows's existence on my keyboard, so I usually switch it out for like the Alt key, because for me, this is the right Alt, this is right Control, left Control, left Alt. And then the other key that I definitely need is actually a Windows key, <laughs> um, but not for, uh, you know, it's Windows look or anything, just because it's one of the modifiers and you need a couple of modifiers to get along. So um, I took the mod keycap that they had, which I gather in the Bluetooth variant actually goes up here, but it's convenient for me to put it here. And I replaced the home function with the left windows functionality. Um, so this is how I like to use it. I like to have like mod is here and then I can use that um, to navigate my windows and such. And one thing that I noticed immediately and that I don't really like about the, the new keycaps is that if you look at this here now, right, you have control, alt, mod, and end. And I can sort of do this motion with my finger very easily, right? Like they're really lined up nicely. Um, and especially if I have my thumb over the thumb cluster, I can sort of slide it over any of the different keys and it's very convenient and comfortable. Now, if you look at the right-hand side of this thumb cluster, you can see what they ship with by default. And before I swap this out, the home and end key were in the same situation as the page up and page down key here. And page up and page down, like I, I, I like the functionality, right? Like I leave these here, it's fine. But the problem is that the, in terms of the angling, I hope this, this comes across on camera. The problem is that these are angled quite a bit. You can see this one is not angled. This one is very angled. And this one is also very angled. And the problem is these two are on top of each other. So if I have my finger here, I can sort of feel this giant bump where there didn't used to be a bump in the old version. Like if we look at the old keyboard, the page up, page down, they were like just straight, right? They're not angled. And I don't know why they decided to angle these. I could imagine that with the thumb cluster at the very bottom left, like the page down, it kind of makes sense to angle it so that you can kind of feel that, hey, this is where the thumb cluster ends, right? And because your thumb extends all the way here, it might make it a little easier to hit this key. But what really irks me is that I can no longer move my thumb up like it hits like resistance here, right? Like the movement from, oh, I'm on page down and I want to go back to page up is 
it's just not comfortable. Like, I just wish they had a page up key that was not angled so that the thumb cluster would feel better. But you can already see that we're kind of like very much into the, like the nitty gritty details, right? So this is like a very, I'm gonna say niche complaint or a complaint on a very high level. Aside from that, like I think the the layout and the, the functionality and everything is, is great. Like, you know, these keys, they're properly sized and you know, Kinesis decided to add a couple of keys and I like that they added one here where the function key, like it's it's very nice in terms of it's large, it's easy to hit, it's relatively convenient. There's two of them for symmetry and this really like nicely completes this very outer row here of the keys of the like wider keys, right? Similarly, like all of these new keys here, I think they're calling these the macro keys or the shortcut keys or something like that. Um, the one, two, three, four, they're not actually uh, mapped at all by default. Um, and so that means that you have them, you know, available for whatever you want to do with them. And again, these are like reasonably nicely reachable and, and like properly full sized, right? So in terms of like the, if you just look at the keyboard layout of the 360 and you don't know anything else and you're not used to anything else, this is great. Like it's a good choice. Um, Okay, so it, let's go a little bit more um, over the, the features of the keyboard. Um, and what I'm not gonna cover in this video is like opening it up or anything or talking about any sort of customizations on the electrical or mechanical level. I'm just gonna review this as a first impressions, the way it is um, and the features that it gives you by default and what I have seen so far. It might well be that there's cool features that I just don't know about yet um, or that there's issues that I haven't run into yet but this is what I can tell you so far. So you can see here, that there's one of the LEDs that is lighting up. Um, and that one is the one that indicates that I am already in a custom profile. Um, there are, I believe, nine different profiles that you can use on this keyboard. And um, by default, it actually starts out in profile zero. And in profile zero is sort of a read only profile. So you can't change anything in there. You can't remap anything. You need to switch to a different profile before you can start changing things in here. And I think that's actually a pretty good way um, of both protecting people from themselves or from like messing up their keyboard and feeling like, oh, I, I broke it, right? I can't go back because you, now you can easily go back. You can always go back into a working state. Um, and at the same time, making customizations easily possible, right? Um, so I believe, and I'm not sure if that's actually true. Yeah, that's that's how you switch it. Okay, so you press like the gear button here, the settings buttons, I'm gonna call it. If I press settings and zero, you can see now I'm back in profile zero. That's like the factory read-only profile. None of the LEDs are active and my customizations are not active either. Um, so if I want to go back into my profile, I just press gear one because I chose profile one. Okay, so far so good. So I like the way that the mechanism works, right? Like read only plus custom profiles, great. What I don't like is the LED here. And I don't know if it comes across on camera, but these are just too bright. Like it's a weird LED to begin with because it's a it's an RGB LED. So that means if you look at it, it's not gonna be pure white. Like your eye is gonna pick up on all of these variations of, oh, there's like a little red in there, there's a little green, there's a little blue, and there's also white, but like it's, yeah. <laughs> it, it serves, there's a lot going on there in that LED and it's bright, like it shines right into my eye, right? Uh, no matter which angle that I look at this keyboard, even if I look at it from the very back here, I can still clearly perceive it. And I just don't like it. I think this is one of the things where I'm gonna need to go over it and put a little tape over here, just so that the LED isn't as bright. Um, and I don't know if the LED brightness is something that I could actually tweak. Um, so maybe Kinesis can actually make that configurable. Uh, maybe if it isn't configurable already in this current firmware version, maybe they can release an update and make it so that the LEDs can be very unobtrusive. Like I just, 
it bothers me, right? And that's just, that's sort of, you get this as soon as you make even one customization, right? So there's really no way around it. This LED is always on unless you're like a very vanilla keyboard user, but then why would you spend all of this money on a Kinesis keyboard, right? Um, so yeah, I, I think LED brightness, definitely too high, especially if the LED is on all the time. So that's some, definitely something that they, they should fix. All right, so, but then in terms of customization, um, how does it work? So one of the things you can do on the keyboard level is you can just remap a key, right? So for example, let's say we wanna do like a quick experiment. We're gonna go into, let's call it profile two. And we're gonna say, I wanna remap a key. You can see it blinks all of these to let you know that something's going on, all right? So now I'm gonna say, I want the functionality of key two and I want it to happen when I press key labeled four. So if I now go back and I type one, two, three, four, you can see it typed out one, two, three, two. Um, so the key has been remapped. So you can see this is how simple it is to remap a key. Um, you just initiate the remap functionality, you say source, destination, and this is also how we just restored. One, two, three, four, now it's a four again, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into profile number one, which is where my existing remaps are. Cool, um, let's see what else is there to talk about. Oh, oh yeah, um, so okay, so if we, um, let's say you wanna do more customization, like you don't wanna do just remap a single key, like for example, maybe you wanted to switch back caps lock and escape because you're in a similar situation like me, um, or you just have like this one remapping that you need to do on all of your kinesis and then that, that's that. But maybe you're a power user and you have like 10 different remappings or you wanna back up your remappings or something. And the way it works on the kinesis is you have what's called the V drive, which I presume stands for virtual drive because the kinesis, as you know, it's like a keyboard, it's not a USB memory stick, but if you press V drive, it behaves as if it was a virtual memory drive. So I'm gonna enter this mode. Um, you can see it blinks first green to acknowledge I pressed that key and then blue to indicate it's now in V drive mode. Um, and if we glance up to our monitor, um, we can see that now it actually registered to my operating system as an eight megabyte large uh, thumb drive. So I can use this keyboard while it is in V drive mode. Um, and if I go over here, um, you can see a couple of, of error messages on the left just because of how the utility works that I use for mounting. These are not caused by Kinesis, these are caused by my software setup. Um, and if we take a look at what's up there um, on, on the Kinesis keyboard so far, um, we can see a couple of different files. There's like firmware update files, there's layout files, there's lighting files, and then there's settings. Um, the lighting files actually make me curious, maybe the LEDs can actually, oh yeah, they actually can be configured it looks like. Um, so the 255 makes me think that I can just lower the brightness um, of these LEDs. I'm gonna try that out. Um, actually, why don't we try it out together right now? So let's say replace string 255 with 128. That should make the LEDs half as bright, right? So now if you wanna make that setting actually be effective, either we exit the V drive or we use a gear and refresh. Yeah, I can't quite tell if that did anything though. And I'm also not entirely sure if LED one is the right file, though I am working in layout one, so this should be the one that is uh, corresponding to my profile. So let's go all the way and say 10 instead of 255, refresh. Yeah, I don't know, that is still plenty bright. Let's go from 10 to one. Say refresh. Oh yeah, look. So one, it doesn't even work on here anymore. Uh oh. <laughs> well, maybe it didn't like that. Huh. 
Yeah, it seems stuck. That is not good. Um, let me try to unmount the drive. Nope, does not work either. All right, I'm gonna unplug it. Then replug it. Okay, so the keyboard is here. Okay, so this works. So I like the LED brightness, if we compare, like we go into profile two, it's bright. We go into profile one, it doesn't even light up. So let's try going into V drive again. And you can see it kind of works, but not on this row here. So I'm thinking maybe one is too aggressive and like, but also maybe I need to be, okay, let's go back to 128. And like, I'm gonna solve this later. But yeah, okay. Weird. <laughs> um, All right, but what we can do is we can look at the layout file because that's actually the one that I had a look at earlier. Um, so what we can see here is that we have a bunch of customizations and these are stored as sort of, uh, yeah, I don't wanna say key value, but like, Wait, let me let me not get this wrong. Okay, so this is, yeah, this is the opposite way that you would do it on the Kinesis, right? Like if you do a remap on the Kinesis, you would se select the function that you have and then the key onto which to map that function to. Um, on the file here, it's exactly the other way around. Um, in the layout file, you have the key that you want to change the function off and then you have a, an arrow, and then you have the function that you want to have appear when you press the key. So in my case, I just have a couple of customizations. As I mentioned, um, I have the caps lock and um, the caps lock and escape switch. Uh, let's see, so escape does caps lock, caps lock does delete, right, right. And then delete does escape, yeah. So that's sort of like the triple that I have right there. Then I have like the insert one, which is on the backslash key. Um, and then the right windows and the home key for the left windows. Um, so that's like sort of my thumb cluster. Um, and those are all of the changes that I need. Um, so it's a relatively light remap. I'm not remapping any of the other keys, but you know, just those. And it, it didn't take me very long to arrive at those. Um, I also looked at the Windows program that they ship. Um, and it's nice in that it allows you to like graphically change. And obviously you don't need to look up any of the, I think they, they call them tokens, like the programmatic identifiers for the, for the key names and functions. Um, obviously if you have like a, a GUI program, then that can just prompt you for everything and validate your stuff, etc. But you can also just as well, just mount the V drive, edit the stuff in a text editor, save it. And that's how I did my first customization on it here. So that's perfectly fine. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so then to exit the V drive, all you need to do is um, gear V drive again, and then you exit it. Okay, um, so one last thing that I wanna talk about is um, the, the tilting and the splitting, right? So we already mentioned it's a split keyboard. Personally, um, so the way that they say you should do it is you should start out with moving it all the way together and then moving them out until you find the sweet spot. Now, personally, I haven't quite found the sweet spot. Um, and I, 
I just don't know why that is. Like, you know, maybe the sweet spot should just magically occur to me as soon as I move it and rest my hands, but that's not how it happened. Like, you know, as I was trying this out for the first evening, I sort of was like, okay, and if I have my hands like that, but then it turns out my hands are sometimes slightly angled, so maybe I should angle these to make it more comfortable, right? So maybe maybe they should actually go like this. And then it turns out that I had my one hand actually differently angled than the other. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm just still looking for that magical position that I like, right? Um, just because of how I'm used to certain things, like certain ways of like moving my hands over the keyboard and certain ways of resting my fingers on the keys. Um, it just... I don't know. And maybe for me, the answer is I just need to use the bridge and go back to like the original way of how it was, but then I can't benefit from it being a split, right? So I'm not yet decided on whether I want this to be a split keyboard or not, um, but yeah, we'll see. And then the other thing you can do here is you can not only split it, but you can also tilt it. So let me demonstrate. You have this little key here, which unlocks this mechanism. So if I hold down the key, I can now angle it higher and I can go back if I press the key again and then go lower, right? So let's see, right? So this is sort of middle, this is low and this is high, right? All right. So, and the way they say is you should start out on low, I believe, and then angle it until you feel comfortable. So this would be like, the medium angle on both, right? And that actually uh, feels pretty decent. Um, and then this would be the high angle on both. And you can say, still feels pretty decent. And it works. This now starts to remind me of the keyboards that actually go like all the way like this, right? Where you would type like that. It's not quite as pronounced, but it is pronounced enough that you do notice like this is weirdly different than other keyboards, right? And I'm not saying it's weird per se, like I probably could get used to this. But yeah, I don't know how convenient and comfortable it is. So previously I have just been using it on the low setting. Um, but I do want to experiment a little bit with like the medium setting maybe. I feel like that could probably be the one that I get used to first. And then I don't know if I'm going to switch it up all the way to high. Um, and they say that this is because like if you look at your hands, right, the natural resting position is kind of like this. So already if you're doing this, you're in an unnatural position. So ideally you would do this or maybe that, right? But not all the way like this. So you can kind of see where they're coming from. Um, but at the same time, I don't know how necessary that really is. All right, and then one last bit that I want to review in this first look before I wrap it up is the, the the thumb rests here. And as you can see, currently I don't have any thumb rests on here, right? I just have like the plastic. And on the old one, you can see that they had these sort of pads um, that are just like glued on top of them, right? Like they're, they have an adhesive, you just push them on here. You can kind of remove them uh, and replace them. And on the new one, let me fetch those real quick. So on the new 360, these are the thumb pads that they ship. And I have tried them before, but um, you can probably guess by the fact that I've put them back in the box <laughs> that I didn't really decide to use them. All right, so these are the new thumb pads. Um, and they're like, they're, they're way higher quality than the old ones, right? They're no longer this sort of flimsy feeling pad. They're like, a, this is a proper, proper cushion, right? Like it really reminds you of an ergonomic mouse rest or something like that. And the bottom plate here is magnetic. So it just snaps in place like that, right? And you can take it off like that. So in terms of mechanism, this is great, right? This is such an improvement. You can put them on, push them off uh, when you want to swap them out. Um, 
But here comes the big problem. They are just way too high. Like as soon as I put my hands on them, I feel like I'm like a centimeter or so angled and angled uncomfortably. Like it's too high for me to properly feel the backspace key and the space key. Like, you know, it's as if you're, you're pushing your hand into it like this. Like I need to remove them in order to be in a comfortable position. And this is surprising to me because on the old ones, I'm a believer in the palm rest, right? Like I always put the pads on there and if the pads are not on there, it doesn't feel as good. But with the 360, it's the opposite way around. Like I don't want the palm rests on there. I thought I needed them, but I like they're less comfortable than if I just used the keyboard as it is, right? Like this plastic, actually pretty decent. I can rest my hand on here, no problem. So I'm just not sure. Maybe I would need to give these way more time or maybe I would need to like wear them out a little bit. But what I can say is that they're just much, much higher than the palm rests on the original. And like for me, I just don't want to put them on. So if you're considering ordering the palm rests, be sure to check them out first um, or just be aware that you might end up not using them. Um, but yeah. <laughs> So that about concludes this first look on the Kinesis 360. This is the 360 smart set, so it's not the pro model yet. Um, so there's no like open source firmware on this one, no ZMK firmware on this one. Um, and I expect that I'll come back and, and do more um, content on these, be it like a, a blog review or more videos or I don't know. But this is as far as I want to go today. Um, so thanks for watching and see you soon.